Welcome back to another exciting and thrill-filled adventure with DIY Nautical Dream. Okay, maybe that was a little over the top. Anyways, we'll go ahead and get our next video started. Hi, I'm Rich. I'm Priscilla. And together, we're DIY, DIY Nautical, Nautical Dream. Dream. Welcome back to another episode of DIY Nautical Dream. I'm Priscilla. And I'm Rich. And together, we make, make DIY, DIY Nautical, Nautical Dream. Dream. All right. So in this episode, we are going to talk about the second boat that we viewed in Miami. And this was a Pearson 530, 53-foot Pearson catch. So here you can see a side profile picture of a Pearson 530, 53 foot Pearson. Man, these are beautiful looking boats. You can just tell by that picture that it's a very solid, seaworthy, ocean going vessel. And then here we have a schematic cutaway view diagram view of the boat. And you can see the aft cabin layout on here is just big. It's really a really nice laid out boat all the way through forward and aft. This is also a cutter rig catch sailboat. And this was a really, really nice boat. You like it? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Well, so first of all, before we get too far into this, we would just like to say thank you for uh, viewing our channel. And we know there's lots of choices out there and lots of content out there to look at. And uh, we're really excited to share our story, our journey on how we ultimately led up to finding the boat we have today. And so that's why we're reviewing these boats. We just want to show you what our experience was boat shopping, um, looking at boats online and traveling to various different locations, sometimes even out of the country to go look at these boats. And each time we were hopeful, that would be the one we could find for us that would be our dream and that would lead us towards our retirement goal of sailing around the world in various different places. If you're one of those people that are waiting to be inspired or you're waiting to make that next step to get started on your dream or your journey don't wait we were waiting for a long time we were talking about it for for a long time year after year we talked about someday one of these days sometime we should get started on and on and it took us watching other channels on youtube of other people starting their journey starting their dream and we thought wow well they can do it we can do it. We should be able to do it also. And so we had we had been saving up money and we you know thought we really didn't have enough but figured we'd look around and see what we could afford with the money we had and maybe stretch what we have saved and go a little bit farther. But so yeah, if you're one of those people like we were, waiting for that moment, waiting for that perfect time, that perfect time's never gonna come. So you just have to take the chance and go for it and decide that you're gonna take the next step to pursue your dream. And so that's what we just want to encourage you to look at that real seriously and find that opportunity to get started on the next step. And just take a little step here and there and pretty soon you'll find out you're you're doing what you've always dreamed you'd be doing. And just keep in mind, if it was easy, it wouldn't be a dream. And we always say if it, if it was easy, we wouldn't be doing it. So it takes work. It takes effort, it takes keeping that dream alive. And it takes determination. Yeah, it takes de determination and courage to take every next step. You know, that's kind of, we just want to share that little thought with you. And uh, hopefully you're one of those people out there waiting to get started or already have gotten started and make it happen. It's not going to do it on its own. Right? Yeah. Right. Anyways, guys, I guess I'm going to take over. Okay, what do you got? <laughs> So um, let's go ahead and uh, start reviewing this Pearson 53. I really like this boat. What did you like about this boat? It's everything. It's everything. Like, So I, here we go. Baby's already giving me that look like, hey man, do whatever you got to do. We need to get this boat. She's already reviewing the brochure, checking the price, making sure it's within our limits. We got the money. If not, she wants me to figure out how we're going to find the money. but baby likes this boat I like it too but I think we need to look at the inside before we get too far into this 
I thought the last boat we look at was yeah. the one. If I remember right, you said the search is yeah, over. Yeah, so why would we even go further? Well, because you said that we're gonna go look at all the boat that we plan to look at for this uh, vacation. Yeah, and so that's a good reason why we continued on with the search. The list of boats that we have picked out was because you know we're hoping there's gonna be more than one good one in this search. Yeah, so we just we drove on to Miami to the second stop and we pulled into the parking lot and this is another one of those these people are living in really good locations where they're living in a condo and they got this canal right behind their condo and this channel back there where all these boats are tied up at a, to a dock and here's the Pe Pearson 53 tied up to this dock and uh, you know perfect setting really great place so when we pulled up to park to get out of the car and look at this boat, this is what we saw. This nice canal system that, where these condos are bordering it on either side and they got these places to park the boats alongside these docks and walkways. Man, what a, what a way to live. And as we were getting out of the car, the broker had kind of chased us down to make sure we got to the right location. Stopped me in the parking lot kind of whispered a little little bit to me that this boat had room for negotiation on it and uh, he thought it, he thought himself that the owner was asking a little too much for it we kind of thought that was a little bit odd we you don't normally hear that from a broker but hey whatever we'll keep that in the back of our mind as we go up to this boat so the broker actually took off and said you know if we were interested in this boat let's get back in touch later and so yeah. okay Cool, we're gonna look at this one. Negotiate with me instead of owner. Yeah, yeah. And so this is another one of those boats where we're gonna get a chance to look at it without the broker there bugging us and trying to distract us. So anyway, so that's just a little side note there. So we get out of the car and start walking towards the boat and we find the owner and he kind of greets us as we're looking at the boat. And we took a few quick looks to the outside so yeah, we took a couple of quick looks at the outside of the boat and really liked the style, the design, the look. It's just a very nice, attractive looking boat. It's catch rig. It's modern looking still, but looks like it has everything we're looking for, except for maybe no windows in the aft transom. I liked everything I saw. You, you like the looks of it? I, yes, I like it a lot. Yeah. But remember, while we're driving you said oh you're not gonna like <laughs> this boat yeah we almost didn't go look at this one because it mm. seemed like it, it seemed like the broker was having, hard, having a hard time fitting us in on this schedule and our time window was kind of tight so um we thought hey if we don't see it we don't see it i'm like you're probably not even gonna like this one anyways it's more of a modern style sailboat and you know we might not even like it so but if we see it, at the end it ends up my number one. Whoa, that's kind of early. So should we just end the video here then? No, or what? Th that's what I said <laughs> oh, at the okay. end. All right. Well, I guess we'll <laughs> follow along. We'll we'll go ahead and tell go ahead and tell the story. She kind of left the ending right there for yeah, you. Yeah, this all talks. Pretend she didn't say that, right? Yeah. Okay. Go so, anyways, on. yeah, we we walk up, meet the owner, and uh, he gets us on board. First thing he says is he wanted us to take our shoes off. <laughs> so anyway, so we get on board and. Uh, He's got the air conditioning running, which we're like, hey, that's kind of cool. And um, so we get on inside and it's it's pretty well chilled inside. Uh, I, w I did take a quick look around the cockpit real quick as we were getting in and noticed that the cockpit's pretty roomy on this boat. We'll talk about that later. So we go down the companionway stairs. Um, this one did have a little bit more of a uh, ladder kind of walk-in companionway stairs, but not too bad. We did have so to off to the left of this picture, you can see the companionway stairs leading into the main salon. Uh, there's not too many steps there, but there are a few, and the handholds don't look like they're the best. But at least it's not a long staircase or a long ladder to come in. Looking around on the inside of the main salon, pretty impressive. Really well spread out. Lots of uh, seating areas all throughout, so we like that. Just really, really impressed with the size of how how big the main salon was. The main salon on this boat is just big. It's full beam width. It has a very nice uh, settee area there with a nice table with storage in the center. It's got the cool lights over the top of the table. It's got a nice nav station off to one side. It's just a really big roomy main salon area. Very attractive. It, this was a really roomy boat inside and 
it had that the wood inside it had the nice look the lamps hanging over the table did have plastic over the couches kind of was interesting with that the galley on this boat was really well laid out it was long but it was just very roomy galley um, here's a couple shots of the galley on this boat now it's a long galley but wow is it laid out really nice it has a three burner gimbaled propane stove oven and then it also has the double stainless steel deep sinks also has the in countertop freezer and refrigerator access also has a really nice microwave right over top of the control panel there and then again here's another angle view of the galley looking looking uh, towards the main salon again so yeah you can tell it's really well laid out nice wood floors in it the other thing that i noticed which i thought was really cool is he had all the full all the floor hatches were open in all the key areas where we were going to want to check. So you can see. The bilge was open. The uh, propeller dripless shaft seal was, the floor was open for that so we could inspect it. And we're like, wow, this guy is, he's, he's ready for serious. us. Yeah, he's serious. He's ready for us. Um, so here you, you can see a couple pictures of the floor accesses that he had opened up for us. And uh, it was really nice. We were able to get a good look at the propeller shaft seal and see how that's looking it's not leaking and the propeller shaft itself looks good it's not all terribly rusty and then also the mast boot or i'm sorry the mast base mast step was also uh, open so we could look at that and it was nice the owner was prepared for us and the first place we head was from the main salon towards the aft cabin we had learned that through boat shopping we want to find out if it's got the right kind of bed that we're looking for. And yeah, this one, it this one, <laughs> this one had it. Not only this, did this have a uh, partial walk around on each side of the bed. The bed wasn't super high and it's it had, perfect. and it had plenty of uh, headroom over the top of the bed, if you know what I mean. So for those, uh, on top action. Yeah, that too. Yeah, that'll work. <laughs> that, I was, wasn't going to go there, but yeah. So headroom for, it just had plenty of headroom sp uh, space in the, aft cabin which we really like so here's a couple of views of the aft bedroom this is the master bedroom on this boat and you can see the bed is is just exactly like what we want it's uh, accessible from either side so we don't have to disturb anybody when we're getting in and out of the bed which is really nice it's got plenty of headroom over the top of the bed so you can sit up and you don't have to worry about hitting your head in the middle of the night one thing I noticed uh, was there an overhead panel that was removed. It looks like they were either maybe running some wiring, troubleshooting, or maybe there was a leak in that area. But other than that, this room is perfect. The woodwork in here is fine and beautiful and is well cared for and it's all in really good shape. I had a really nice uh, master bathroom back there, which had lots of room, had a shower in it, really well laid out. So here's a couple of looks at the uh, aft master bathroom. Uh, it's got a normal toilet in there, which is nice. It's got a nice roomy uh, sink area as well. And then it's got a nice stall shower that's separate from the toilet. So it's not a wet head. It's actually a stall shower, which is nice. So not everything gets wet. Wood all throughout the inside of this boat, which was really nice. It had a really, from what I, what we'd seen up to this point, the breaker panel control panel looked pretty nice had a microwave. this boat actually had a pretty nice breaker control panel on it had uh, lots of access um, lots of switches on there a lot of things you could control on it which is which is nice to have things independently controlled on there and then uh, also once again there's another shot of the microwave which is right above the control panel in the galley so it's an easy spot to get to had a microwave in the galley it had lots of storage in the galley um, having plenty of storage space on a boat is very important as well as in the galley having enough storage space in the galley to put everything in its own place and be able to get it out without having to sort through a bunch of stuff is really important this galley was really well laid out had lots of thought for reaching and grabbing and storing things in mind and even though it wasn't a u-shaped galley it was still nice and very attractive um the, what and this is the first boat that I've seen that has a 
good room engine when you can or you can work stand up oh yeah she wants me to be working on the engine all the time so she thought hey this boat's got a big room in it engine room in it lots of room for working on the engine and it did it was nice i mean you had really good access to the engine uh had good access to the generator as well one of the things that Baby and I both liked about this boat was the engine room was really big, open, easy to get to the engine and the generator on just about all sides, top and bottom. And also as well as it has an alarm system in there for notification if there's a problem, overheat, something like that. Uh, it's well lit, it's easy for working, it's got maintenance thought out in mind and you also have your air conditioning condensers in there as well so yeah it's a very very big open engine room very nice hopefully you wouldn't need to spend a lot of time in there but if you needed to it had all the access and one of the issues the owner pointed out to us fairly early in the search was the engine had some pretty good number of hours on it already and he wasn't sure how much life the engine had left in it i remember him mentioning that but it appeared to be running well and you know, so we weren't really that far into it where we were considering if the engine was going to be our hold up, hold up or not. But like I said, we, we liked everything we were seeing so far. We liked the fact that he was prepared for us to look at this boat. Access hatches and everything was open. It just, you know, really nice. The other thing we liked was um, passing forward. There was also these uh, bunks, like these quarter berths off to the side where there was look like three people could sleep in that area moving and forward on the way up to the v berth and forward uh main head area there's these bunks along the way and it looks like there's two per side and the way they had it configured you could sleep probably at least two or three adults in there but if you really wanted to you could sleep four and it appeared they were using the lower bunks as storage and things like that but yeah nice addition to the boat for sure and then of course the forward V-berth area was pretty roomy and really nice looking, pretty impressive. So as we start making our way forward towards the forward V-berth area, you can start to see how good it's looking. I mean, the woodwork in this boat, throughout this boat is beautiful looking, but there's no exception to that in the V-berth area as well. It's equally as beautiful. And you can see the V-berth is actually pretty good size. I mean, you could sleep two adults in here pretty easy. It's got plenty of room and there's ample storage throughout in the V-berth area. There's places to store things on top of the storage uh, cabinet areas and as well as many drawers and lockers to put things in also. It's just really nicely laid out and very spacious for, for a V-berth area on a boat. It's very nice. Also, you'll take a look at some of the woodwork throughout this V-berth area. And you can see that it's been pretty well maintained. It's still really shiny, has lots of good varnish on it which is a good sign that it's been maintained. And then here you'll take a couple looks as we're looking from the V-berth heading aft again. And you can see from the V-berth into the main salon and take a look at that Teak and Holly sole inside there. It's very nice looking. It had two, two good size uh, bathrooms on the boat. As we started making our way aft back towards the main salon, uh, leaving the forward cabin area, we were take we stopped to take a look at the uh, second bathroom, second forward head on this boat, and yeah, this thing's pretty good sized as well. I mean, this is bigger than some of the bathrooms you see on other boats, and it would be considered a master bathroom on some of the smaller sailboats and motorboats. So this one's actually pretty roomy. It's very well laid out. Has lots of storage and cabinetry inside, and it has its own stall shower as well. So that's a big win right there and uh, we really like this layout. Most of the areas we looked at, the headliner looked pretty good. Um, just, yeah, we, we thought this was a pretty well set up boat. But in one area in the main salon, along where the rub rail was on the outside, there had been an impact and there had been leaks there and it, it appeared they were trying to do, trying to do some repairs in that area and it still was leaking and so the wood had been deteriorated and had to be removed and they were they just hadn't put the panel back up or replaced it a couple spots so here you can see that area that we were talking about where the damage was uh caused by some kind of an impact from the outside of the boat but it's pretty extensive i mean they had to tear apart a lot of interior to get to the uh, source of the damage there and 
the it was still leaking they never did get it fixed and he had he said this was like this for it's been like this for a few years so uh, it's you know who knows what how far the damage goes behind there and where did the water go when it ran down below the floors etc a couple spots on the floor where there was a little bit of water that had been standing at some time but um, all in all I think that we what we saw up to this point was really solid looked good we could deal with whatever we were seeing so far so here's some of the examples of the water staining on the wood on the floors and surrounding areas. That, wa that wood's not going to come back. You're going to have to replace it to get rid of those stains. Same thing here over by the electrical socket. That's going to have to be replaced. It will not come back. And then also uh, lower area below the curved door there. That wood's been sitting with water on it. I don't know if that'll come back or not. It might. And then the floor here leading out of the forward cabin area. That also has water staining on it. And then here's this part in the galley also. And uh, I don't know why, but that looks like it's had water sitting on it for quite a while. So who knows what's going on there. Large main salon, which also converts into a sleeping area. Um, I like the oil lamps that were in there. The hanging lights over the table look nice. And in the center of the table was a cover that lifts up so you can, so you can uh, store things in there. So here you can see the oil lamp mounted on the forward bulkhead there in the right corner of the main salon. And then also here's the dining table and it's got those lamps hanging over the top of it. I really like that. And then the center portion of it is a storage area. If you lift that up, you, there's storage in the center of the table. Pretty cool. Yeah, he had all kinds of spares underneath the uh, seating area in the main salon, which some of the totes were organized really well with standards and fasteners and you know small spares and stuff tucked away in there so that was cool so here you can see the totes and they're all labeled what kind of spares they are standard screws washers nuts bolts it's neatly organized and it's always nice to have spares on a boat that is for sure they had a nice navigation desk area in there the electronics looked like they could use to be modernized not something you'd have to do right away I think there would be uh, other pressing issues that need to be attended to before that. But. Here's a couple shots of the navigation station area. Baby sitting in the swing out chair, looking like she's comfortable there. But yeah, you can see the electronics here for the navigation. It's not real up to date. Uh, some of the basic stuff's there. I mean, you could get by with it for a while, but definitely if you're going to do any large passage or crossing an ocean, you're going to want to update that to probably to something a little more modern. Had a nice swing out chair for the uh, nav station area, which was cool. And we liked that. Some of the wood had appeared like it's been wet before. It had some staining at the base of it, things like that. But that's that's pretty common on an older boat. You're gonna find that on a lot of boats. It just happens sometimes from sitting or uh, condensation or anything, something like that getting on there. But all in all, it was a really bright in interior on the boat and lots of port lights and windows throughout. So it allowed a lot of light inside, which kept it nice and well lit in there. It had several deck, large deck hatches. Then we decided to head back out into the main, up on deck into the main cockpit area. The seating area in there was very roomy, which we really liked that. But Here's a couple of views of the cockpit area on this boat. Uh, you can see the companionway entry there. And then here we're looking at the cockpit area. And it's pretty large. I mean, you could sit probably a good, uh, I'd say probably about four to six people in there pretty comfortably, maybe even more, and still be able to move around and do what you need to do. But it looked really well laid out. He had the covers for going over the wood, which is nice to keep a, keep all the teak and everything protected from the sun, and covers for the helm station as well. But uh, I did not see anything for electronics up there, so I'm not sure if they had them stored away or something. But uh, otherwise that's another expense down the road but yeah it's all in all it's a really nice well laid out cockpit area on this size of a boat but this is where things kind of started to go towards the little dark side negative area there was a couple of uh, rigging lines that had either broken loose or they undid them for some reason but they were uh, some of the uh, rigging cables were hanging free or wrapped around another cable Notice some rust and corrosion on several of the rigging fitting uh, just, just above the chain plates. 
So here's a few of the several instances where we saw rust or corrosion on some of the uh, rigging fittings. And then even some of them, even worse yet, we would see some cracks in there where you could see rust that was oozing out of the cracks. No way is that any kind of, that is not good at all. I, I know that for sure. And then, uh, yeah, they had lots of patina on some of the threads as well. And just all kinds of concerning areas around the rigging. There's numerous areas like that. Seeing those kind of things sets off some warning, warning alarms, you know, warning bells. So we're knowing, we know that the rigging's gonna be an issue. The rigging's gonna have to be gone through. Mm -hmm. And this, this is a catch. So you got two masts on this, this as well. And it's also a cutter rig catch. So you got a lot of extra rigging that's gonna need to be attended to on here. And that's gonna be a, it's gonna be a fair expense. There was some uh, small dents in the deck. I don't know where they dropped something on it, things like that. So. Um, but that, like I said, it's a used boat. I mean, it's it's going to have some miles on it. Mm -hmm. It's going to have some things like that. So those aren't deal breakers. But the rigging was kind of a concern just because to actually have cables that were hanging freely, that, that means this boat's not going sailing anytime soon. Got to check that out. And some of the door aid vents were removed and closed off with look like plexiglass covers. Here's a couple pictures of the door aid vents with these cover boxes on there. I'm not sure if these are removed for storage, uh, the door aids, or if this is just the way they are and there's some kind of a pop-up type button thing on there. I'm not sure, but it looks like the actual door aid vents themselves were removed. But you can also see some of the large deck hatch openings on the deck also. Those are really nice for letting the light in down below. Help light up the area pretty nice. Looked like they had some issues going on around the mast boot. Um, There's a couple of views of the mast boot on this boat, and uh, it just looks like the mast boot has a couple tears in it on the one in there. And uh, the purpose of this mast boot is to help keep uh, rainwater and moisture from flowing down the mast into the main cabin of the area of the boat. So uh, it's not a it's not a major deal, but it's something you wouldn't want to leave unattended and get it fixed soon as possible. You know, he kind of just left us alone to look at whatever we wanted to look at at that, at that point and just told us to talk to him later when we were done. It had an in-mass furler for the mainsail, which was nice, but those also can be a uh, liability as well because if it jams with the sail out and you need to reef, you need to get the sail in because you're into a storm and it's jammed, which they do jam, it's not, not uncommon then that's that's an issue that's something you have to be prepared to deal with on a moment's notice and in and usually when something like that happens it's not going to be in conditions that are favorable mm -hmm. for doing that kind of work or a repair real quick so in mass furlers are nice but they can also be uh, a liability as well so just something to keep in mind um, we didn't yeah so here's a couple pictures of the uh in mass furling system and this boat actually had an in mass mainsail furling system and also the mizzen sail was also an in-mast uh, furling sail as well. So that's pretty cool. And it's a really nice option to have, but you just gotta keep these maintained because the lower bearings on these can seize up and then your sail gets jammed in the worst position possible during the worst conditions as possible, usually. And as with most things, there's always pros and cons. No any of the condition about the sails, but uh, just looking around, figuring, look, looking at the rigging, seeing how the rigging was then you're kind of thinking that maybe the maintenance wasn't done on the in mass furlough system as well and maybe it works maybe it needs to be maintained maybe it doesn't work maybe the bearings you know need to, need to be replaced whatever but we're not trying to be nitpicky we're, we're, we're trying to be realistic this is something you know this is an investment we're gonna put a lot of money into just making the purchase after the purchase we know that there's going to be a series of projects and we just like to take mental inventory of what we can see throughout these short walkthroughs of what we may have to consider later on when we're trying to decide if we're going to make an offer on this boat or not. So the rigging was already a big question mark. The rub rail where it had looked like it had taken a side impact either from a post or another boat or coming into a dock too, too fast had left damage on the inside and on the outside and they tried to patch it, but it wasn't it wasn't repaired correctly. These are issues that we're going to take note of and kind of just think about in the back of our mind when we uh, 
go back home and we start thinking about these boats. But So I wanted to take a couple pictures of uh, up on deck and just show how big this boat is and how well laid out it is. But uh, for a 53 foot boat, this up on deck is really big. Lots of room for moving around. Um, even on the side decks, there's plenty of room for moving around. And, you know, on a sailboat coming in and out of a mooring or coming in and out of a marina, uh, there's always somebody going to be up on deck moving around, getting in and out of tight quarters, helping you dock, things like that. And uh, this boat has lots of room for moving around and walking around. The rigging is outside far enough on the decks that it's really not going to get right directly in somebody's way when they're walking uh, forward or aft on the deck so that, that was really nice um, also on the aft of the deck it has a nice area for the dinghy davits and stuff back there for launching the dinghy so yeah this boat was really thought out real well during the design phase and and uh, it shows it looks really nice we really like the room on the deck it was very very spacious mm -hmm. very big um, this boat has spider cracks in the gel coat this boat Here's a couple of views of some of the spider cracking we saw on the deck of this boat. Uh, it was around some fittings and hatch hinges and just general areas, surface areas on the deck and around cutouts, things like that. Uh, later on in our video series, once we uh, get started on our own DIY project boat, we'll go into greater detail on how to fix those. But simple way to explain it is I would grind those out with like a Dremel tool down to the base fiberglass and then I would fill those in with the uh, thick and epoxy material maybe some chopped fiberglass strand mixed in with it. You're, these boats are gonna have cracks in the gel coat there are spider cracks they, and they're pretty well throughout the boat on the deck and that's that's it is what it is you're you know that's the way it is on boats that have been used and older boats you're gonna find that. Had nice lifelines on there stanchions felt pretty secure yeah, I mean, all in all, I think this was a pretty solid boat. From what we could tell, we, we were liking everything that we saw. We liked the room on the on the aft deck especially. It was roomy. The bow area was roomy, and the main cockpit area was roomy. So as far as we were concerned, this boat was checking a lot of the boxes we had on our list of things we were looking for in a boat like this. Did not have windows in the aft transom. Didn't check that box, but a lot of boats are not going to check that box. Here's a couple views of the transom on this boat, and as you can see, there's no windows in the aft transom on this one. In fact, it's not even a sugar scoop transom, so uh, any scuba diving or swimming off of this boat, you're going to have to climb that ladder to get out of the water, and that won't be any fun with scuba gear on, I can tell you that. Uh, but it did have what appeared to be a swim ladder. It was not the sugar scoop type of transom, but it, it did have a ladder for getting it out of the water, so... Uh, diving off of this scuba diving off of this boat would have been a little tricky getting mm -hmm. back out because right. you know but we could we could work with that and sometimes they put down a, a swing down swim platform on these boats so we could have looked at something like that later also but I don't know my I just I like this boat it was a surprise that we were actually gonna even like this boat we almost didn't even see it because yeah. we were kind of at least I thought we were kind of not even like it but uh, what a pleasant surprise it was. Can't say enough good things about the beautiful nautical feel of the interior of this boat and the, how big and spacious it was. It was very clean on the inside. It was clean on the outside. In fact, he had just gotten done washing it before we got there. So it's nice when you see somebody's taking care of their boat. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if they're willing to wash it, you know they're willing to do some of the other work because washing a boat this size is not easy. It doesn't happen fast. All in all, what did you think? I like it. You like it? Yeah. I liked it too. It had a nice shower in the main bathroom. Uh -huh. so, I like everything. Yeah. Inside. And uh, yeah, so it, this boat definitely would work for what we were looking for at the time. So we were seriously going to put this one on our list, our short list. So at this point in the search where we were at, we had two boats on our short list now we had this one and the Irwin 52 mm -hmm. and these were two both really nice boats yeah there's there's opportunities for repairs on both of them but from what we could tell but i will go with this than to Irwin. oh yeah no i if i if i'm I, already like yeah I, I like it yep I, we're gonna get this for sure yeah i mean if uh if we were gonna decide between these two i would have picked the 
the uh, Pearson 53 as well. So the funny thing is on this boat is after we got home and we had been talking about this boat a lot, after we got home and we really started to consider it and like we said before, we like to take lots of pictures and we zoom in on these pictures and we look for issues, cracks, corrosion, staining, water, wood damage, whatever it may be. We look at these areas and we look at them really closely and try to figure out what we're looking at and what we need to consider. And and so we kind of got to a point where we were going to make an offer on this boat after we got back home talking to the owner and he had already had somebody considering it. Yeah, it was pending. And so we were like, wow, that kind of hurt. Said. Yeah. So then I got a hold, he said, so you have to talk to the broker. And so I got a hold of the broker and, and the broker said, yeah, it's pending survey. And so they're going to haul the boat out and inspect it. And if everything passed on the haul out survey, then the, the people that had this boat under contract were going to buy it. So long story short, those people went ahead and bought the boat. I asked the broker, what did they find during the survey? Um, number one item during the survey was the rigging. Mostly everything. Yeah, needed to complete. All the rigging cables needed to be replaced. They were all compromised from corrosion, cracks, turnbuckle head cracks, stuff like that. So that was one thing that we kind of knew. Next thing that we didn't know was because the boat was in the water when we looked at it, but this had major keel damage on it so we dodged a bullet on that one um he said that repairs were going to be estimated to be about a hundred thousand dollars in repairs so the people who bought this boat got it for a really good price but uh keel damage is not something that's in our wheelhouse it's not in our skill set it's not something that uh i've ever messed with i wouldn't know where to begin on that i would definitely have had to hire out help on that one so yeah, it's too bad. It was a very beautiful boat, um, really attractive. It was modern looking on the outside, but on the inside you felt like you were on a true classic. Uh, really nautical feel on the inside. So we got the look on the outside of kind of a modern looking boat, but on the inside it was an interior I could live with as far as all the wood and everything. It had that warm, just really warm boat feel to it. And, and I liked it and the interior looked like whoever had built it and put it together done a, did a really good job. All in all, we were happy to have toured this boat and we were actually just kind of sad this one kind of got away from us a little bit, but mm -hmm. you know, we uh, um, that's what happens. Sometimes when you find a boat and you, you know, we had too many more to go look at still and we could, you know, even he even said, make me an offer before we even left. And I uh, said, so yeah, we're not ready to do that yet. So we'll, we'll get a hold of you later. He gave me his phone number and his e email address. And, you know, later we, we took too long. If it was meant to be, it would have worked out. Yeah. And if it wasn't meant to be, it wouldn't worked out. And so obviously it wasn't meant to be. It was not the one, but it's a beautiful boat. I thought for sure that um, this is our boat. Yeah. They kind of had that feeling after we left. We really started kind of feeling a little attached to it it's check all to me it's check all my lists i don't know about you but... yeah no i didn't check all my list but um oh yeah the window at the back well yeah i would like the windows in the transom but i also want a, a sugar scoop transom preferably an easy way in easy way out for diving mm -hmm. and this boat didn't really have it didn't have an easy way in back in from the water you can always jump overboard but getting back out's the tricky part so but we could have made you know there's ways to get around that. You can have a fold up swim step and all kinds of other things we could have done. So, yeah. but yeah, it was a nice boat, really beautiful, mm -hmm. very attractive. I like the look from, <laughs> I like the look from the outside or the inside. So it was a nice boat. So yeah, after this, we were heading to the Bahamas and then the next boat on the list was in Trinidad. His favorite. Yep. Again. Otherwise known as Port of Spain. But yeah, so we're we're traveling to Trinidad to look at our next boat. And up next, nice, beautiful CT-54. Another one of those on our list. So we are really looking forward to seeing this one. And it's known as the Wind Wanderer. So if you ever heard of the Wind Wanderer, that's what we're getting ready to go look at. So CT-54s are, are at the top of my list as far as, far as favorite boats goes. And so we're looking forward to 
See you in our next boat yep. on the search. In short, his favorite boat. Yeah, ours. Our favorite boat. All right. So until then, stay tuned. And please, if you like what you see, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And comment down below. Did we miss something on this that you could see? Or was this a nice looking boat or what? And uh, yeah, so we just thank you for following along with our journey. And we promise we'll get through these boats and you'll see what we ended up buying in the end and what we have today. And yeah, it all works out in the end. It just takes a lot of patience. Who would have thought buying a boat would have been so hard? It takes a lot of patience to buy the boat that you really want, mm -hmm. right? So yeah, if you're, if you're thinking about following your dream, make sure you do it. So until then, stay tuned guys till next video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. See ya. Bye. Now there's a nice looking shell. I'd keep that one. And what's that? My idea. Oh, we got a boat coming. It's this guy. Five engines on the back. That was sweet. Welcome back to another episode of DIY Nautical Dream. <laughs> I thought you were going to do it. Take two. Okay. Welcome back to another edition. Whoops. No. <laughs> All right, we got this.